Hello. In this lecture, we're going to learn about finding the least common multiple of polynomials. Because it requires a little bit of background knowledge, I'm going to start off with a nice problem in which I'm going to find the least common multiple of monomials. And monomials, of course, are much nicer than polynomials because it's a single term. So let's say we have 12x cubed and 28x that we're trying to find the least common multiple between. Now remember, multiple means you multiply what we're starting with by something, and this guy can be multiplied by something else to get us the same multiple. That's what we're interested in. Um, in the About page, there's a link to a more basic definition for multiples, and that will help you not get it confused with factors. Now, in order to find the least common multiple, we are going to factor. And better yet, we're going to find the prime factorization. So looking at 12, I'm going to break it down. It does not matter what numbers you pick. I like to pick 2 because it's the easy one. 6 breaks down to 2 and 3, and those are my prime numbers. If you really must see, x cubed breaks down to x times x times x. I don't actually know what x is, but I'm going to pretend in my head that it's prime. That way I don't have to worry about it. It's not necessarily prime, but that's how I'm going to think of it, because I can't factor it anymore. So the only factors of x are 1 in itself, because I don't know what x is. 28, we're going to do the same story, and if you need to, break up your page so you visualize these as two different things. 4 can go into 28 7 times. 7 is prime. 4 breaks down to 2 and 2. And then now we have x, which is just by itself. Once we find the prime factorization, we're going to collect the largest group of primes. We don't need to double count, so like the maximum numbers that it appears in our prime factorizations. We have two twos here and two twos here. So either we're going to collect a group of two or we're going to collect a group of two. Two is the same as two, so we just take two. That was a little bit boring. How about let's try the threes? We have a single three here and there are none here. So the max number of threes that we have in a single group is three. Now we'll go ahead and try the next guy. We got seven. One seven here. No sevens here. The maximum number we have is seven. So we're going to collect one seven. Then we have three x's and one x. And it always works out nicely for the variables that the highest degree involved in our two polynomials, or monomials, I'm sorry, is what we're going to take for the least common multiple. So x cubed is what we're going to take. I'm going to go ahead and shorthand x times x times x as x cubed. Now, once we have all these things together, we are going to multiply them because that's our least common multiple. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12, times 7 is 84, x cubed. Now, because I really want to push this idea home with you guys, what this means to you, this is a multiple. That means we can take 12x cubed, multiply it by, I don't know, something. Uh, here, I'll put parentheses. And I will get this multiple. That also means at the same time, we can take, and I don't remember what it was, 28x, and multiply it by something and we'll end up with 84x cubed. 84x cubed is what we multiply to get to. It's the multiple. And it's the smallest multiple these two numbers have in common. Uh, or not numbers, but monomials. There's, of course, infinite possible multiples out there. But this is the smallest one, and that's the nicest one we want. So if you had to think about it, what times 12 gets you 84, you'd tell me 7. You already have x cubed, so you don't have to worry about anything, so there you go. You can multiply this number that we started with by something to get us the multiple they have in common. Same deal with 28. Actually, I'm going to have to think a little bit more about 28. I think 6 times 28 is 84, and x times x squared will get us x cubed. No, why did I say 6? I'm crazy. 6 is way too big. I'm going to have to go ahead and do the long division, I think. Oh my goodness, how sad is that? 
eight times what ends in a four? Three. Oh, wow. Okay, pretend that I had that right away. Let's not worry about my multiplication table sucking. Um, what our answer in the end is, is 84x cubed. So that's how we find the multiple. So let's just recap the steps. We're going to factor first. If there is no factoring and it's prime, we'll just put the thing in parentheses. That's what we're going to collect. We're going to collect the largest group of primes from the factorizations. Now, the one I gave you was nice, and I promised you it would be nice. So let's see another one. Let's say we have m squared minus m minus 6, and we have m to the 4th. Oh, no, 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 no. Why would I do that? This video might need to be redone. We have m squared minus 4m minus 12. And let's, hopefully that's seenable on your uh, screen. Let me just shift it over. Okay. So we want to find the least common multiple between these two things. Our first step, even with the monomials, was to factor. So we're going to try to factor these. And I intentionally gave myself nice numbers because we already see that I struggle. So when I work with this, the leading coefficient's 1. It's in descending order. It's a trinomial. I'm going to factor it where I find factors of negative 6, whose sum is negative 1. And positive 2 and negative 3 work. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the other guy. And let me just draw a line here so we don't get them confused. Factoring this guy, same story. Leading coefficient is 1. It's in descending order, no GCF other than 1. So we'll factor this. We need factors of negative 12 who add up to negative 4. And we got positive 2 and negative 6. Now we're going to collect the largest group of primes from the factorizations. So we have an m plus 2. And, oh, we have an m plus 2. But the largest group in each one of them is only 1 m plus 2. So that's the biggest one we collect. We have an m minus 3. No m minus 3's, so we are going to collect an m minus 3. We have an m minus 6. No m minus 6's, so we're going to collect a single m minus 6. So pretty much you collect everything, but you don't want to double dip. So if something's repeated, you're not going to collect multiple of that. But it's what I mean by repeat is, is that it's in two separate ones very different from when we had two twos in the single guy and we had to collect the two twos. So we're going to collect the largest group from the factorizations and we'll multiply them all together and this is our least common multiple. Now don't mess with this, leave it alone. Uh, you can f multiply this out but it really isn't worth the time. The least common multiple is much more useful to us when it's factored. So just to remind you of the steps, and I'll end it here. If you need to pause it and read down, write down the, oh, you know what? Let me do one more. I'm not going to do that. Let's do one more, and this one's going to be a little bit more boring. Let's find the least common multiple of r and r plus 6. So we're going to factor them. And we'll look at r, and we can't factor that any further. So this is where the r is prime. We're going to assume it's prime. It might not be, but I'm just going to say for this case, since I don't know what r is, I'm going to consider him prime. Because the only thing r has is 1 times r. If I had an actual value, maybe I could factor it. Now here's the interesting part. r plus 6 can't actually factor that, so I'll put him in parentheses as well. The only reason why I do this step maybe some people don't, is because it helps me visualize r plus 6 is one thing together. r is one thing. And they do not look the same. So when I collect my largest group, I have an r here, and there's no single r by itself. This r is stuck with the plus 6. So for my least common multiple, I'm going to collect that r. And I'm going to multiply, and there's an r plus 6 here, no r plus 6 there. So I'll collect the r plus 6. And now that's my least common multiple between the two. So that makes students feel a little bit funky because you're like, well, if it's prime, there's no LCM. That's not the case. If it's prime, we're going to end up just collecting it. And we always collect the largest group of primes from the factorizations. So that's where I'll end now. Sorry for the video. Hopefully I'll make another one better. Take care.